Now in this lecture we will discuss the concept of dilution. What is dilution? So dilution is a process by which we can convert a concentrated solution into dilute solution. So what is dilution? It is a process by which a concentrated solution can be converted into into dilute solution. Now how will you do this one? So let us say you have a concentrated solution. Now if we add water, add water, then finally I will have a dilute solution. So this is your dilute solution. Let us say I have a solution of concent concentrated solution of molarity M1 and volume B1 and if we add water then final concentration becomes M2 and final volume of solution becomes V2. So what is M1? M1 is molarity of solution before dilution. So this is molarity of solution before dilution. And what is V1? So this is volume of solution before dilution. Now same we have after, so M2 is after dilution, so molarity after dilution, molarity of solution and this is after dilution. And V2 is the volume after dilution. and this is of course of solution. Now in the process of dilution what is the thing that will remain constant? That is mole of solute. Initially this solution has n mole of solute then finally it will also have n mole of solute. This is very logical because we cannot destroy the solute. So we can say in the process of dilution in the process of dilution moles of solute remain same. Now this can be easily said. Now we can find what is the initial mole of solute and what is the final mole of solute. If you remember the definition of molarity, molarity is nothing but number of moles by volume. So from here we can write number of moles this is equals to molarity into volume. So if I know, want to know number of mole we have to multiply molarity into volume. So let us say moles of moles of solute before dilution before dilution and now this will be molarity is initially M1 and the volume is V1 so M1 V1. Now moles of solute after dilution this will be M2 and the volume is V2. Now we said in the process of dilution moles of solute remain same that is M1 V1 is equals to M2 V2. So we have this relationship and this relationship can be used to find either final molarity or final volume. So let us say 
we can use this relation so this relation can be used a relation can be used to find final volume or final molarity of solution let us say I have an example so let us say we have an example here as an easy one I have 10 m solution 10 m NaOH solution this is a concentrated solution and the volume is initial volume is 1 liter now this solution so we added water added water so that final volume becomes 10 liter so the final volume of solution becomes 10 liter now what is the molarity what is the final molarity in this case so again we will apply the same idea m1 v1 that is 10 into 1 is equals to m2 v2 that is 10 into m that is m2 let us call this is final molarity is m2 so 10 goes so final molarity is 1 so this is one example we have that is if you increase the volume 10 times molarity reduces 10 times you can also have the same example in a different format let us say I have a solution of 10 m NaOH and let us say we have 1 liter solution so 1 liter if we add water so that it is given the final molarity becomes 1 liter so so 1 m so let us say or let us say 0.5 m so final molarity is given that is 0 0.5 m then what is the final volume that is V2 so we can calculate that is M1 V1 is equals to M2 V2 so from here we can find this is V2 is 20 liter now the question is how much water we have added here that is you see initial volume is 1 liter and the final volume is 20 liter this means we have added 19 liter of water so in this case in this case in this case 19 liter of water ah sorry one, ah yeah 19 liter of water has been added has been added now let us say if I say if I increase the volume n times or eta times now the same question example I have a molarity m1 v1 initially and the final volume is increased to eta times so final volume is eta times v1 so question says if final volume is increased by eta times final volume volume of solution is increased to eta times what will happen to the molarity so we have to find m2 so you see once again we can apply this equation that is m1 v1 that is m1 into v1 is equals to m2 v2 m2 is m2 and v2 is eta times v1 so v1 goes so m2 is basically m1 by eta this means if you increase the volume by eta times molarity will reduce by eta times so we can say if we increase the volume if we increase the volume by eta times volume by eta times molarity of solution molarity of solution will reduce by eta times by eta times or other way around if you increase the molarity by eta times or and then volume you have to have decreased by eta times the same thing 